Hey, welcome to the channel. It's uh, it's Sunday. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon. And I'm up here in my neighborhood. I thought I'd take you for a walk around uh, my neighborhood and show you around a little bit. Tell you a little story that I read uh, read the other night on, on, the, uh, on the internet. And y'all may be aware of it, may not be. I had never read it before, but I talked to a friend of mine and he had, he had heard it before. So maybe something y'all are aware of, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, it was cold this morning when we woke up. It was probably, I'm gonna say probably 18, 19 Celsius. And it was really cold and it's still cool now. It's probably about 23 right now. And uh, it's kind of, it looks like it's gonna rain, but it, it's not, it's just kind of cloudy. But we're gonna start out right here walking. And we're right at the edge of the uh, entrance to the Mubon that I live in. And I thought this would be a good place to start. And I pretty much showed you all to the left, so I'm gonna go to the right this time. Right there is where I got my hair cut last time I got it cut. And uh, there's a laundromat right next door. And then over here, this guy sells the gas bottles that we cook with. He's building a really nice house up behind there. But we'll walk straight and then I'm gonna make a left. And there's another hairdresser up here on or no, I think we'll go straight and then we'll make a left. There's some really nice houses in here. And this is a kind of busy street. It runs parallel to the uh, to Highway 108. And we kind of use this road, this road so we can stay off the, the big road because there's always traffic on it. Then you got little apartments down in here. And then you got another place where you can wash your clothes. And it's just a neat little area. And I believe that's a picture of the queen. And these are like little spirit houses that they put up in, in neighborhoods. And we'll see a couple more of these as we go along. But uh, the story I'm gonna tell you about today is, it's really an interesting story and it's kind of intriguing because there's some catches to it that are, um, really kind of interesting. You see these houses built back in here. We're gonna go straight here. This house was built while I was living here. It's really nice. And we'll probably come back up that road right there, but we're gonna walk around this way. The story, it uh, deals with a young girl by the name of Heather Mack. And Heather grew up in a rich family just outside of Chicago. And uh, she lived with her mother and father and back in uh, 2006 her mother her her mother and her father were on a cruise in the or in Greece and the uh, the father who had been sick had passed away while they were on the cruise and the mother just kind of wasn't a whole lot she could do she just kind of continued on with the cruise and then after the cruise they went back and had a funeral. Now this guy here is my exterminator. He comes once every two months and sprays for uh, termites and everything else. And he's got the best fried banana that, that we've had. And I'll show you a picture of it. Looks like he's doing real well because he's building a nice house back here. But they sell really good fried banana here. I have to, uh, I have to stay away from it because it just puts major weight on me and these houses just went up recently too this was just a well actually there was one house here and some people bought the lot and they put four or five houses here but uh, in 2006 her father passes away and uh, 
from that point on, her mother just has a terrible time with her. I mean, they, uh, hey, they, um, they say the cop, the, the police, had, I say cops, I shouldn't talk like that. The uh, police had been to their house uh, 86 times between 2006 and 2016. It, at one point, she had even uh, she'd assaulted her mother. She'd stolen from her mother, and uh, when she got to high school, she hooked up with a guy by the name of Tommy Schaefer, who was a rapper. And the mother didn't approve of the relationship, and uh, so much to the point that uh, she packed up the house and they moved to a different different part of Chicago on the other side of town, supposedly to try to keep her away from this boy. And uh, apparently it didn't work. And from what I'm reading during the course of their relationship, her mother had forced her to have two abortions from being pregnant from this guy. And uh, just, you know, just a, a real, real, just a problem child. The mother couldn't handle her. And I don't know if the mother wasn't really um, you know, a little bit overbearing too, which would, would call, you know, create the problem as well. Um, I've run into kids like that before, you know, where they had everything on a silver spoon and they were really hard to deal with. Money, uh, hello. Money doesn't always uh, ensure that your kids are gonna grow up Perfect. Sometimes that uh, actually causes some of the problems. Now these 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 people here cook uh, soy milk at the uh, market. There's their truck. I bet they're. Oh, I know they're off today because they're repairing the the pad where they put their truck. So they've been off for a few days. Really nice people. As a matter of fact, that was him that waved to me when on the motorcycle. Really some nice houses. Hey, th that one there is vacant. You could rent that one. Really, really nice, really sweet people here. But uh, by this time, Heather's about 19 years old. And her father left her quite a bit of money. And uh, the mother was pretty much in charge of it. And I think it was something like $1.6 million, million dollars or something like that. And uh, it was set up in a trust account, and the mother was the administrator to the trust account. Well, from what her attorneys are saying, Heather gets pregnant again, and her mother takes her to, uh, they plan a vacation to Bali. And according to, this is, you know, the mother's not here to speak for herself, but Heather's attorneys are saying that uh, she took her to Bali to have another abortion. Hello? Well, when they get to Bali, Heather gets in contact with her boyfriend, Tommy Schaefer, back in the United States. And it's unclear exactly what, what transcribed, but uh, she ended up stealing her mother's credit card and uh, buying him a business class ticket from Chicago to Bali. And the plan was to murder the mother. Now, this is based on uh, it'll get get a little bit how I know this is kind of it'll get clearer as I finish the story and you have your hospital right there I have spent a couple nights in there and we are gonna go up here these are all apartments here and we're gonna go to the right that lady used to cook my food she used to live right down the street from me And my wife used to teach these 
this, these kids' uh, daughter. Can I put you on YouTube? YouTube? How you doing? Hey. Say hello. <laughs> He's shy. See ya. Hey, buddy. Yeah, my wife used to teach them, their, their daughter. And this is usually an open bar at night. And I used to live in this Mubon right here. The, uh, the restaurant that I showed you in the last video where they were cooking Mukata, he used to cook right here in, his, uh, in front of his house and then he stopped and moved over there and he's done real well. But we're going to walk down to the left and go down towards, I want to show you the community center and the walking track and all that. But anyway, back to the story. Let me get sidetracked too much. I'll piss everybody off. Uh, they're texting back and forth. Heather and uh, Tommy. And basically Heather's telling her, telling Tommy that he'll pay him $50,000 to come there and kill, his, kill her mother. Well, Tommy, by this time, I guess he's at the airport. And uh, he doesn't really know exactly what to do. So he starts texting his cousin and explains to his cousin that uh, Heather wants him to come to, uh, to Bali and, and murder her mother. And from my understanding, there was another person involved in it, too, that who was giving him information. So the guy, you know, the cousin basically tells him, you know, just hit her over the head and kill her. And a uh, few more conversations that go back and forth. Anyway, Tommy gets over there to Bali. And uh, apparently, Heather had her own plan, and it kind of went sour because he texts back to the guy that, back in the States, his cousin, and tells him that she had tried to do it and she couldn't do it. So uh, the, uh, the friend back here in, uh, in the United States gives him a couple more options and kind of tells him how to do it. Well, according to the, to the article, Tommy, and her mother get into an argument in the lobby of the hotel. And you know, I can understand why, you know, she's brought her daughter there to try to get away from this guy and there he shows up and I'm sure she's figured out that uh, he didn't have enough money to buy that ticket for himself. But anyway, what happens from there, they go upstairs to the room and uh, Tommy says that the, mo the mother said that she was going to kill the baby and tried to choke him and all this, but long story short is he ends up hitting her over the head with a, ba a vase in the room and, and uh, the two of them, both Heather and, and Tommy, killed the mother. And somehow or another stuffed her body into a metal suitcase and carried the suitcase down and got in, put it in the back of a taxi and took off in a taxi. Well, the taxi driver takes them about 10 miles away and for some reason or another, they leave the suitcase in the back of the taxi. Taxi driver opens up the, the back of the suitcase and notices the blood and gets suspicious. So he goes back to the, uh, the hotel where he picks them up and gets with the security there. And uh, security calls the police and they open up the the suitcase and they find the body in there and then they go up to the room and they find what appears to be a, a crime scene that was you know they had attempted to clean up the mess but they couldn't now this is the walking track and it's really really nice uh, they've got this road going all the way around it and then they've got a real nice track on the inside and it's open to the public it's part of the community and this is the local elementary school here and also on the left we'll walk down in front and then uh, and cut across. 
And my house used to be right on the other side of this, uh, right on the other side of that water tower that you're seeing right there. I couldn't get, get through. I, I'd have to walk around because it was a canal. But uh, it was nice to be this, this close. I want to show you this old man here on the tricycle. He is 94 years old, and he goes out and does this every single day. Swadi kap, sabadi mai. Ever since I've lived here, he he used to get out and walk, but now he rides that tricycle around. 94 years old, and he'll get off the bike and he'll go over to the uh, equipment down here on the right, and he'll he'll exercise on it. But uh, anyway, the police find that. The cab driver tells them, you know, where he drops them off. And uh, the cops go and arrest them. Well, the first thing that they say is that uh, somebody tried to rob them and uh, they were able to get away and, you know, the, the mother couldn't get away. Well, you know, the cops didn't buy that. Uh, they charged them, charged them both with homicide, first degree homicide. And they confiscated their phones. And this is where it gets really, really interesting. They, uh, the FBI got hold of the phones and they, they found the conversations between Heather, Tommy, and uh, his cousin and one other guy. So, they went ahead and charged the two guys here with conspiracy to commit first degree murder. They both pled guilty and got, not, got a nine year sentence. Heather and Tommy were both convicted of murder. Tommy was sentenced to 18 years and Heather was sentenced to 10. And she, they confirmed that she was, hey kids. <laughs> Swadi cop. Hello. <laughs> kids are just darling. They love coming to the park too. But they confirmed that she was pregnant and they confirmed that Tommy was the father. Well, it was really strange and I didn't realize this, but she was able to keep the child in prison for up to two years after she had the baby. And then after two years she found uh, what I believe to be somebody that she had been in jail with that uh, took the child after that. It was not, I think it was an Australian couple that uh, took the child. And October of this year, yeah, October of this year, she was released from prison. And she got time off for good behavior and, and a few other things. And Tommy's still, he's still serving his time. She wanted to stay in Indonesia. And the government told her no, there was no way she was going to stay in Indonesia. And uh, the, her child was an American, not Indonesian, based on the way she was born, and according to their law. Because uh, she'd considered just leaving the child with the, uh, with the people that had her. But she couldn't. Well... The inheritance, from, from the way I'm reading it, 150000 was paid out for her legal fees here. And her attorney in, uh, in Indonesia was trying to get another 200000 out, and, and they, they blocked it. They just, her, uh, the mother's, brother there's a nice pool you got an olympic size swimming pool right there that we can use <laughs> Manawa? yeah not me he's asking i think he's asking me if i'm cold but yeah there's a nice pool here and it's it's i think it's 40 baht to use it all day and part of it's covered so you you know you don't have the sun beating down on you all the time Let's see if i can walk up here and get a better picture of it but uh the mother's brother stepped in because he became the executor of the, of the estate. And under Illinois law, if you're responsible for a person's death, you can't be 
hair and hair to their whatever the money is. So Heather was pretty much shit out of luck. But what they did do, um, was they, uh, they allowed the daughter to get the money, which would have been Heather's, Heather's daughter. I don't know if I can get up there or not. I can raise this thing up so you can see it real good. You got a gate here. I don't think they'll mind. Nobody ever bothers with anybody here. Yeah, this is nice. They got changing rooms in the back with showers and up here, there's a really nice workout room up there. And that, that too is, I think it's, I think you pay 40 baht and you can use the pool and the workout room, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it's 20, if you want to pay by the year, it's something like 2,200 baht. It's very reasonable. I'm just too damn lazy. And then over here, we've got a bunch of workout equipment that, uh, it's basically free and it, it's relatively good. You got taking selfies and getting their exercise. There's all kinds of workout equipment over here that you can use. Kids are just having a blast playing soccer. But, and I told you there was something really kind of weird about this case. She, uh, her and her daughter get released for, from custody, and she wants to go to California. And the FBI, you know, I, I've worked with I've, I've worked with a lot of FBI, and I've worked with two good agents in the uh, 23 years that that I I was in law enforcement. I, I just I, some of them are good, and some of them are just you know just not real good. But uh, the FBI came out and told them, no, they don't want her going to California. They want her to go to Chicago. Well, right then, you know, the attorneys know what's going to happen. And she gets off the plane in, in Chicago and they immediately arrest her. And they take the child. And I, I, from my understanding is the first part that I read was her attorney took possession of the child for her, and then she went into custody. Now, whether she's made bond or not, I, by now, I don't, I don't really know. It really didn't say. But they charged her with conspiracy to commit murder of a U.S. citizen on foreign soil. Now, this is where it gets really, really crazy. I don't think it'll stick um, because she's already been tried for murder, for murdering the same person and she's been convicted. Even though she hasn't been convicted in the United States, she's still been convicted in a foreign country. Now, I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I, I don't believe it does. But it sounds to me like uh, they're gonna run into some double jeopardy issues. You can't try a person for the, for the same crime twice. Now, whether they're saying the conspiracy is a separate crime, with, in my experience, in law enforcement, kids waving, hey, sweet dog. If we charge somebody with murder, conspiracy to commit the murder, would have been a, a lesser included offense for whatever actions they took. It wouldn't have been a, a separate charge. So, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'd be real interested to see how they uh, how they flip that one around. But now Tommy, he's still he got he got 18 years. He's still doing his time. But uh, but she's free. And I don't know exactly what the status of the child is. The kid's awful rich now. Um, but it'll be in, it'll be interesting to to uh, to follow it. She's scheduled for for a trial. I believe it's October of 2023. And it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I personally, I mean, I've seen the the federal government do some crazy stuff. And uh, 
you know, if we had somebody that we wanted off the streets and wanted them off the streets for a long time, we would do our best to get whatever charges we could to go federal and uh, because they serve day for day. And they, the, the, there's just so many appeals they get and so many motions that their attorneys can file. And then that judge, when he says guilty, you're gone. And uh, your feet don't hit, touch the ground. You don't pay $200 and get out of jail. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, it, it's a whole different ball game. And, and I'll give you, for instance, I arrested a guy for, uh, for cocaine, uh, dealing cocaine. And when we went to arrest him, he, uh, he had a machine gun with a silencer, which guns and drugs don't, uh, don't mix. Well, ATF, you know, as soon as they read machine gun, the ATF came in and, you know, asked me if, if you know, if, if I'd mind if they took over the case. I said, no, I said, I have no problem with it. And uh, they had the federal public defender. It was a husband and wife team. And they were convicted of, of trafficking in, in uh, cocaine and possession of a illegal weapon. And the judge sentenced them to 30 years in prison. And they took them right out of the, they had been on bond. They took them right out of the courtroom and um, put them into custody. And it was just the look on their faces, you know, I mean, it was just, uh, it was really, it was really shocking. You know, the judge in federal court is just so much different. You know, the judge sits real high and he's got these two little lights on, on either side of him. And the rest of the courtroom is pretty much dim and dark. And uh, I can't remember what the judge's name was, but he leaned over and he sentenced him to 30 years to go into custody right now. And it just, oh man, the courtroom just, their family just kind of dropped. But about 12 years later, I'm downtown and I'm getting out of my car, going up to the post office. And here comes this guy bouncing down the, the, uh, the steps of the uh, post office. And I looked, and you know, he's not supposed to be out until I'm long retired. And uh, he comes down, shakes my hand, he says, he thanks me for arresting him. He said, I basically saved his life. He was so badly hooked on cocaine. But what had happened was, President Clinton in all of his glory changed the law so that unless the firearm was on their person, they could, could no longer prosecute him. I mean, if the guy was laying on the bed and he had a machine gun, you know, laying on the floor next to the bed, you couldn't, you couldn't enhance his sentence, his drug sentence based on the gun. It had to be on their person. So he got, uh, he got 18 years knocked off his sentence and he was walking free. And as far as I know, he straightened up. He said he had a lot of health problems from doing cocaine for so long. And he was just glad that uh, he lived through it. And I never, you know, I was there for another, I don't know how many years, I guess 12 years or whatever. And I never, never heard anything on him. So I, maybe he straightened out his life. And him and his wife could go on and, and live their life. So federal court is nothing to fool with. Um, you know, so I, I think that there's something that, that these prosecutors know or some kind of catch in the law that's going to get past the, the double jeopardy clause, and she's probably going to go off for a long time. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Now, there was another case just recently where a American girl had got killed in Mexico by her two friends. And... Uh, there was actually a video, I saw a video clip of the fight and the, Me the Mexican authorities didn't, didn't prosecute the, uh, the people that were fighting with her. But I understand that the FBI has now taken over the case now. I don't know what will come of that or not. But it's kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting the way the law works. 
And this place up here is they cook French fries, chicken nuggets, uh, all kinds of different stuff on the left. She's just shut, set this little shop up in front of her house. You got lumii trees here. But this is a really, really cool neighborhood. I mean, I, you know, like I said in the last video when we first moved here, we didn't want to live outside of a MUBON, you know, without security or anything like that. And, uh, hey, doggies. But, you know, I, I'd have no problem living in any one of these houses here. Yeah, Sister Cheese. There she is. Hello. Everybody getting their snacks. But everybody's friendly and if it was three o'clock in the morning I would have no problem walking around down here. Hello. <laughs> now down here takes you to the main road. This is just a small alley. But we're gonna walk straight down here. I'll say hello to everybody. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and you get your three-wheel electric carts. Yeah, she's got some stuff in there. Hello. They're just really friendly people and you know, everybody, you know, we all buy at the same market and eat at the same places. So, you know, even though they don't know me by name, they know me by face by now. And everybody says hello and it's real friendly. Now we eat over here, I believe it was the night before last. It was really good. She cooked some hot spicy kapow right here out of her house. And you know, as you can see, people are still wearing masks right here. Mostly Thai people. Uh, I had to cough there. I didn't want to blow you all out of the out of the room. And people selling food. Hello. There's a neat house right there. There's a lot of these old houses that haven't been changed over. Swati Cap. <laughs> it's a really neat neighborhood. Let's see what else we've got up here. We're going to come up to another uh, spirit house right in the middle of the road here that I want to show you and we may walk behind the hospital I don't know what this is looks like it I don't know hmm looks like you could probably rent this place too got several little houses down oh these are apartments right here on the right on the left that's just where somebody lives those are the apartments it says wear face mask if you feel sick please report to our medical staff immediately now they've just put that there to keep the sun out the hospital is actually over this way. Now this is a little spirit house that's built right in the middle of the road. Hey, kitty cat. Hey, yeah, somebody's left you some fish. I'm not going to bother you, buddy. Yeah, go eat your fish. And somebody's building some houses, build a house in here and they've kind of stopped.
but this is a little spirit house for this particular area. And then you've got your, there's a lady that runs this country store here. A lot of times you see them out here and they're eating some tum and drinking beer. And then the hospital is right here. Let's see, I don't know how long we've been videoing this. This guy gets out and works out every day. Twenty cop. Really good. <laughs> but yeah, that old man that I showed you. Man, he is, just goes to show that if you get out and exercise, you might, you might stay alive for a while. Yeah, that's the backside of the hospital. It's a good hospital too. I mean, I've, I've spent the night there twice. And, well, actually one night and a half. I won't count the second night. Second time, Leck got me out of it. Got me out of it, and I got to go home, and had to come back the next morning. Hey, little buddy. It's okay. And then you got a few more shots right here. Get out of the road here, so I don't get run over. It was funny. My wife stopped in there and wanted to get something. And uh, the lady says, is your husband still beating you? My wife looks at her kind of funny. And uh, she mistook Leck for somebody else. And, hey, I can buy a lottery ticket here. Huh. Hello. Yeah, let me see if I can find one. Body cap. Whew. Let's see. I'll take that one right there. There you go. Thank you. That's our number. Maybe we'll get lucky. I had a bunch of sevens last one. I didn't, didn't win on it. And over here is a good place to eat. We eat here sometimes too. And right there is a blind guy that does massages in that place right there. And I believe this place over here belongs to the hospital, if I'm not mistaken. I may be wrong. I, I don't know, but I, I do see a lot of nurses coming out of there. But we'll walk up to the end and we'll kind of make a, make a circle. These are some really, now, see this is a house that's got a lot of land with it. When you look, it's, you don't normally see that much land in these houses around here. <laughs> now, that lady there, she used to clean houses and now she owns the shop that, uh, where I just bought the, uh, bought the lottery ticket. It's a really neat little area. Somewhere up here, I've got a picture that I use as a screen, my, my background screen for my, uh, my computer. And it's on one of these streets that I took a picture just looking straight down the road. So we've got a tent pitched in their yard. This is good sleeping out weather, no doubt. It's nice and cool. You're not gonna sweat. It looks like this place is either for sale or for rent. That's a nice chunk of land. Now somebody would come in and knock that house down and build a nice house back here. Same way with this lot over here on the left. Now over here, 
where you see these big apartments up here on the right. When we first came here, that lot was vacant. And uh, it was for sale, and they only wanted like two million baht for it. It was a little bit bigger than what, uh, what we wanted, and a little bit more money than we wanted to spend. But uh, there was a, a lady that came over from uh, Sweden, and she was going to buy it, and, and uh, unfortunately it was sold before she got over here. But they were going to buy this and, and put a house in there, which would have been a really nice place. And these are par apartments you can probably rent for, I'm going to say between $1,500 and $2,000 a month. They're just one-room apartments. Hey. It's a really nice area. I mean, you got everything you want there. You got a little kitchen and bathroom and a place to put your stove. What more could you ask for? Now that road there will take us out to uh, 108 and this one here will take us back to the house. Street lights just came on. But I'm very curious to see what happens in her trial. Uh, what kind of what kind of law they're 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 prosecuting her on? Because it, it you know the guys that were here they got charged with conspiracy. They weren't convicted of murder in uh, in Bali, so I can understand that. There's a couple of Volkswagens there. Huh. Old one and a new one. You know, they weren't convicted. So it wouldn't have been double jeopardy for them. But she's been convicted of murder. So we'll see what happens. See if double jeopardy plays a, a key point in it or not. You know, that's what, according to what I read in, on the internet, that's what her attorneys are going to argue. And I think they've got a pretty good argument. Listen, we're almost back at the house, and uh, or not at the house, but at the entrance to the house. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this little walk and the little story. And it's, this is where I live. This is this is kind of my stomping grounds right here. Uh, I'm very comfortable here. It fits me like a glove, and I really wouldn't want to live anyplace else. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.